Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table we're going to be talking about DJI's recent announcement about their new geofencing system that they've um, uh, called Geo. Um, but before we go into that, it's The Kitchen Table of course, whenever we're discussing drones and drone related matters we like to have a beverage, uh, another early morning filming slot today I'm afraid, so we're on the coffee. Uh, it's uh, Guatemalan. Uh, some single origin Guatemala from um, Cuchimatan in the Huehuetenango region. So, um, cheers. Oh, I need that. So, yes, um, DJI um, announced GEO, their Geospatial Environment Online. Just see what they did there. So, basically, what, what, what they've done is they've announced a new geofencing feature um which will not only um it's kind of an extension of the existing dji no fly zone system and they're extending it to far more um areas um to cover things like to cover areas of danger other than airports so things like power stations and prisons and you know anywhere that it probably isn't a good idea to fly your drone, but they're also doing uh, doing something whereby uh, if you're online and you've got access to the internet, it can also give you advisories about things like uh, temporary restrictions, like the fires in California uh, and things like that. Um, now, there's a couple of issues in this. Um, they've kind of acknowledged that they can't go in with a heavy handed approach and say, no, you can't fly within this distance of this place. Because, you know, if they want drones to be used commercially and for commercial purposes, you may have all the permissions and the uh, qualifications and everything you need to do from your local uh, authority to, to, to fly in that area. Maybe you're doing a documentary on the power station and you have all the permissions. It would be crazy for them to just lock down. So uh, what they've done is put in a feature whereby as long as you've registered with them and they've verified who you are because you've registered your credit card details or your mobile phone number with them, they will allow you to override it. Uh, um, which sort of defeats the object. Um, the other issue that I have with it is that these temporary restrictions that, 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 that it advises you about, um, which is a great feature, I really like that a lot, but Buried in the small print in the sort of Q and A from Brendan Shulman, their legal counsel. Interesting that he was the lead on saying this. Um, it said, "Look, we're we're working on on something for those of you who fly without internet connected devices." Now, I don't know about you. I use a tablet. I use a, a Nexus Seven tablet. It doesn't have a SIM card in it. It has Wi-Fi only. And if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I don't fly with it connected to the internet. I pre preload the maps at home and I go out and fly. So it isn't going to work for me. So I'm slightly concerned about their their answer to the question. Oh, we're going to find some way of what's it going to do? Is it going to default to unless you're connected to the internet, you can't have anything? Does that mean I'm going to have to create a hotspot with my phone? And I don't want to do that necessarily. So I, I, we need to have a look at how how that's going to work. Um, it's going to roll out to basically anything that uses the Go app. So that's effectively the Phantom Three and the Inspire One drones and any future generation they're saying. So it looks like this app control um, built-in light bridge system that they're, that they're currently running with is gonna be there for the foreseeable future. Um, they've also got completely restricted zones that you cannot opt out of and no unlocking is possible. So the, the massive zone around Washington DC is completely unlockable whether you like it or not. So. Bottom line is if you're doing some commercial filming in the big no-fly zone around DC and you have permission, don't use a DJI Inspire 1 or a DJI Phantom 3, <clears throat> it appears. Now, I really like the concept of what they're trying to do. Um, and one of the big disclaimers they've put is, look, this doesn't absolve you of knowing what the law is in your country. This is here to help you. So it will give you advisories. It will give you warning notices. It will try and do things. But the fact that you can override it means it's still putting the onus on you. Um, part of me thinks this has been relatively quickly rushed through because in the States, particularly, I know there is a consultation out at the moment about uh, regist compulsory registration of, of drones and, and talking about, you know, uh, compulsory insurance and extending the uh, the restrictions, if you like, on where you can fly, how high you can fly, how far you can fly. So uh, <clears throat> I think what DJI have done here is laudable. 
Uh, and certainly in cases like the things of the wildfires where people were blocking, you know, preventing uh, um, the water bombing aircraft from flying because they were busy getting, oh, look, look at these cool pictures of these houses burning to the ground with their drones. Then, yeah, that's that's a great feature. But if you're not connected to the Wi-Fi, um, you know, and, and can you defeat it by putting a piece of tin foil over the top and stopping any satellite connections getting through? You know, what happens if you want to fly indoors and, and, and therefore the aircraft can't get a GPS signal? How, how does it default? Does it, does, it, does it know where you are or not? Um, so these are some interesting questions that will come out in, in the wash. They're going to do this with a, an update to the, um, to the app. So it looks like it's driven from the app. So again, um, if you decide not to update, will your aircraft allow you to fly? Or if you're not running the latest uh, version with the Geo built in, are you going to be grounded until you update? That's something that uh, wasn't clear to me. Um, they are going to roll it out to Europe and North America. And they're using a, a company called Airmap, a third party company to provide the data. Um, and as I said, they're going to be looking at, at not just airports anymore. They're, 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 they're saying, look, this is for um, aviation safety. So we're going to be looking at you know prisons, power plants, anything sensitive uh, for non-aviation security concerns. So DJI are really, I think, trying to limit the number of people doing idiotic things. They've also talked about sporting events. They could put a temporary restriction around, you know, a tennis event, for example, so that it doesn't end up uh, with some nasty headlines. So I can see what they're doing. I can see why they're doing it. I'm just not 100% sure quite yet how it's going to work and if really. If you can override it, if you, if you only have to give a mobile phone number, which let's face it, if you've bought a pay-as-you-go mobile, unregistered mobile, if you want to do bad things with a Phantom, you still can. And to be honest, if you want to do really bad things, you're just going to buy an off-the-shelf thing and build it yourself, which won't have any of the restrictions built in. So I think it's a nice concept. I just need some, some more information to see how it exactly is going to work out. But there we go. Go and have a read of it. I'll put links on the screen. You can see the, the announcement. Um, there we go. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, I really appreciate your support and we'll see you soon back here on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.